So this game is, of course, um, a very recent game. It was played in the Russian Championship, the Super Final, that was held on December 16th of this year. Um, and now this game is considered Daniil Dubov's uh, immortal because of the fact that he, he made a brilliant sacrifice and won a very nice game. Well, we'll take a look at this game. I'll look at it from the white point of view. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, uh, bishop to c4. So Daniil tries to play an Italian, c3, knight f6, and now he plays d4, pawn takes pawn. And um, at this point, normally white plays pawn takes pawn, bishop b4. This is a very well-known no, no, very well known line. I mean, there it's uh, it's extremely well known with d5 takes, and there are a couple ways you can play queen b3 or castles, and um, and and so it's you know it's just a it's a well known theoretical line. Instead, Daniel goes off the beaten path here. He plays pawn to b4, and um, so he plays b4. Sergey goes bishop b6. Daniel plays e5 again, trying to. Um, Sort of like, yeah, it's like a delayed Evans Gambit, kind of. It's like a mixture of the uh, the Juco, Pianissi, Juco Piano sorry, and um, and the Evans Gambit. It's sort of a mix of both setups. So E5 here, hitting the knight. Uh, knight to E4 is played by Sergei. Strange move, by the way. I, I actually was kind of surprised that he didn't play D5, because this is a very thematic move um, to hit the bishop on C4. So if white takes a knight, you can take the bishop here on C4. So I was a little surprised when I looked at the game the first time to see knight to e4 played here. And now Daniil plays bishop d5, trying to uh, trying to prevent black. Because one thing black is lacking here is he would love to push the pawn and develop the bishop to like e6, for example. So say I just make a few random moves. Um, if you can get the bishop here where it interposes, uh, the bishop here on c4 becomes a lot weaker. Also, you could potentially even go bishop g4 as well. So um, that's why Daniil plays uh, he, he plays bishop d5 here to prevent black from pushing and quick quickly developing. So knight c3, they trade, and now Daniil goes bishop to g5, hitting the queen on d8. Knight e7, the only move. Of course, you cannot capture the bishop because the knight on f3 guards it. Daniil castles. Sergei plays h6. Daniil goes bishop h4. And now one thing that's important to note about this game is that in this position, um, you know, black is much better with correct play, objectively. But it's very hard to play as a human because moves like g5 or moves like c2, um, they're very unnatural kind of moves. Even a move like a5 is supposed to be decent. Very weird move, pushing a pawn on the other side of the board, ignoring all of white's forces, which are kind of aiming down towards where your king and queen are. Um, so, so Sergei Castle's logical human move, rook to e1, is played by Danil. Main idea behind rook e1, again, you want to stop black from developing this light square bishop. If black goes d6 here, you play pawn takes pawn, and now because the rook is on e1, after you capture, I can take back. And the rook, the rook protects the bishop on e7, and the queen protects the bishop on d5. So that's why rook e1 is such a good move. So here, uh, Sergei goes queen e8, and now Danil finds very nice nice constant. He plays bishop b3. Again, Sergei cannot push. His bishop is stuck. He cannot push this one because, of course, it's pinned. So he goes a5, and now Danil plays bishop to f6, going going in for the big attack, sort of realizing Duncan that essentially... Underscore donated $4.20. Hikaru really is a pro gamer. No friends to spend New Year's Eve with just like us. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, so, so yeah, so, so Bishop F6 is what, um, is what Daniil plays. Sort of, he realizes if Black has time to develop, kind of, push the pawn, move the bishop, he'll be doing well. Um, so he goes Bishop F6. Now, of course, you can't take the bishop, because after pawn takes, you just get absolutely killed on this E-file. If you move the knight, you lose the queen, otherwise you lose the knight. Um, again, when you look at this position, this lack of development, like, Black really would love to bring this rook, but this bishop can't develop. This bishop is stuck with these two pawns in front of it, so Bishop F6 is a very nice move. So now a4 is played here by Sergei, bishop c4, keeping the bishop on the diagonal, of course, to target this pawn and the king on g8. Knight to g6, queen to d3. This really sets up a very nasty threat. So let's say black were to capture the bishop here. White can now go queen takes knight. You can't recapture the queen because of the pin from the bishop on c4. And after king to h8, queen h6, king g8, you play pawn takes pawn. And we have another classic lobster pincer here with the checkmate on g7. The pawn supports the queen, which will then checkmate the king in the corner, and the king is just finished. So for that reason, uh, Sergei now plays d5. It's sort of temporarily, it cuts the diagonal. The bishop, uh, you'll have to waste a move to capture the pawn, and now I'm finally going to get my bishop out here. So Danil plays e takes d6, of course, and peasant. For those of you guys who are wondering, that is a very well-known French phrase. It's, it looks like the glitch in the matrix. When you push a pawn two squares forward from the original square and there's a pawn next to it, you can play 
you can play pawn takes pawn of course on passant you, you the pawn passes through the other pawn um so he does this so sergey plays bishop e6 um queen takes g6 is played by Danil here uh and this is sort of the reason a lot of people say this is such an immortal game is because of queen takes g6 now the reason that i showed you guys the previous example the game the immortal game between gary kasparov and um and veselin topolov was because in that game it felt very much like it was pure it was some it was a lot of calculation but a lot of pure intuition trusting there that there was a way to um a way to win now when i look at this game queen takes g6 is a very very nice move make no mistake but the problem here is that i think every other move you're just worse if you're you're just much worse no matter what you do and that's the reason that i actually like i don't rank this game as highly as a lot of other people is because i think every other move you're just worse if you play bishop takes e6 there's just knight f4 um queen takes c3 and now black with pawn takes pawn uh it looks like white could maybe take this pawn but after queen to g6 you just get um you get finished off here the the bishop's under attack you're also getting checkmated there's a ton of threats on this diagonal for black now as well um so you can't take on e6 so if we think about candidate moves what are the moves that you could play as a human queen g6 is one bishop e6 is another move i guess you can play d7 although after d7 just queen d7 i mean you're just you're just you have nothing nothing happening here um so to me when i think about this game queen g6 is a very very nice move make no mistake but i feel like it's almost an only move because when you calculate bishop e6 knight f4 and you realize you're just worse and then you see d7 queen d7 really what else are you left with in terms of options of what you can play and um the third thing i would add as well is that after queen takes g6 which is an amazing move pawn takes rook g6 rook e6 queen f7 bishop c3 you do realize when you're doing the calculation of this line that black does not have an obvious way to, to uh, play against the two bishops so you know that the, you know worst case it's losing somehow but it looks very very dangerous and that's why um that's why i to me it's a very nice move very nice tactic but i don't rank it as highly because i actually consider queen g6 to kind of be the only move here um i mean i guess you can take but after bishop c3 bishop c4 you can't take the queen because you lose your queen queen c4 i just go queen c6 and i mean i mean maybe not queen uh, maybe queen d7 is better but again it's like it's it's super dry it's just super dry here um they're saying it's immortal because dubov prepared the entire line uh there's no way that he had this position up to queen takes g6 there's no way um but basically that's the only reason that i would say is is because to me after i look at this position just like if, if i was in a game game mode situation um what what i would do what i would do is i would think like okay what are the moves Bishop takes e6 is one move d7 is a move queen g6 is a move I mean I guess bishop c3 is a move but like I don't I, I it seems to me really hard pressed um I'm hard pressed to come up with a move that that really it looks like white is doing well so that's why to me I think queen takes g6 um no he definitely didn't prep it here the, the line was definitely prepped the this this b4 bishop d5 probably was prepped though um but the thing is that after pawn takes rookie six queen on bishop c3 as a human when you look at the position you realize well there's no way for black to attack the bishops you have them lined up so if black doesn't have an immediate attack then you're probably gonna have some tactics here like rookie seven maybe knight e5 at the right moment and um and so to me like it doesn't it seems like you play it and you don't see an immediate refutation for black so you just go for it and that's the only reason that i don't i don't rank this as highly is because it fills me that there were really no other options besides queen takes g6 okay so king h8 is played here Danil plays rook e4 very nice move I think the only move actually here uh king h8 of course logical move get out of this very nasty pin on the diagonal rook to e4 is played here by Danil uh and now queen to f5 is played by is played by um is, is played by Sergei Danil goes rook e7 again trying to use the two bishops use the ops here create the checkmate and Sergey goes rook g8 only move by the way to try to stop this checkmate here the bishop has really good scope this bishop on b6 oddly enough it looks good but it's only attacking a pawn so um it's not actually as great as it looks I think it's style sheets for the prime so bishop takes g8 rook g8 of course black has to guard the pawn pawn takes pawn and now the real issue for black here is that this rook is amazing it, it guards this pawn which is one square from queening it also creates a secondary threat of hitting the pawn on g7 here so Danil goes queen to c2 
or not Danil, sorry, Sergei goes queen c2, Danil plays bishop e5, because again, even though you lose this pawn after takes king h1, it's just a pawn, nobody cares. So bishop to b6 by Sergei, and now h3, another very nice finesse to move by Danil, just create, a, create some luft for your king, so there's never any potential ice skater on the back rank. Um, and now, now what white wants to do is just bring this rook into the game slowly, and, um, and try to create more threats towards g7, or make a queen on c8. So Sergei plays king to h7, Danil goes rook e1. Again, this pawn on a2 doesn't is not under attack, so if you take the pawn, white just goes... I guess, I don't which one's best? I mean, c8 queen works, so I'll just show, because it's the most thematic. Black takes, but now, now you no longer guard the square, and after king to h8, white goes knight to h4, and the bishop holds the rook. There are all kinds of fossils on the seventh rank. There's also a checkmate with knight g6 as well, so it's completely losing for black. So that's why Sergei goes a3 here. Basically kind of a waiting move. Get the pawn once we're close to the end of the board um, and, and just sort of see what white can play. So now Danil goes king h2. Sergei plays g5. Danil goes knight to d4. Again, he gets the king to a very safe square on h2 where there are no checks because again, the bishop holds every square on this diagonal. So there's no way for black to check the king. Black goes queen to c4. Knight to f5 is played here by, um, or Sergei goes queen c4, Danil goes knight f5. Now you're threatening the pawn three times on g7 with the rook, the bishop, and the knight. You're also threatening knight d6 to hit the queen and then promote the pawn on c7 to c8, or make a promotion on c8. So Danil, not Danil, sorry, Sergei goes queen takes b4, Danil plays rook c1. Um, again, very nice position. These three pieces target the pawn. Knight guards the rook very importantly, and white's just going to make a queen next move. And you see, like, the queen and the bishop, because the king is on h2, you don't really have a way of getting at it, because these square, these dark squares are really covered nicely by the bishop, and it's just really, really, it's just game over, basically. So here, Sergei goes king g6, Neil plays rook g7, Sergei takes. Um, if Sergei were to take the rook on g7, white very simply makes a queen, protecting the knight on f5. Bishop on e5 stops the check, so there's nothing that black can really do here. And um, this is just completely winning. It's game over at this point. So therefore, Sergei plays king takes knight. Danil plays rook takes rook. Sergei takes the pawn. Of course, if the pawn gets to the eighth rank, that's the queen, and that's GG's. Danil takes with the bishop, of course. Now the bishop's not under attack from the king. And after queen b2, rook c5, king e4, rook d8. Sergei resigned the game here in view of the fact that after he plays a move like queen a2, white goes rook to e5 check. Bishop holds the rook. King cannot come to this line because this other rook holds all these squares. So you go king f4, and now white goes rook to d4. This is one checkmate again. Um, or you can do the other checkmate, rook to f8 as well. All right, I guess rook f8 is checkmate in two, to be fair. But but both these both these ideas lead to a checkmate. And um, at this point, there's nothing black can really do to stop rook e5 here because the bishop and the rook hold the square. So that's why that's why um, that's why Sergei resigned. And with this, Danil created what people are calling his immortal game. So I just want to show this game to you as well. Hope you guys enjoy this analysis. Um, I think this is a very, very good game, make no mistake, but I don't put it in the same class as the Kasparov, um, Kasparov game simply because of the fact that it felt to me like Queen G6 was the only only move that, that really made sense. I guess someone actually did point out that rookie 6 is also a move here. Again, after F takes D7, Queen F7, you make a Queen takes. Knight f4, uh, this looks really, really bad for white. Everything is very, very loose here. There's queen g6 coming. Uh, this is under attack. Now the bishop is really menacing. There's also a knight h3 check. So uh, that's why, to me, it's a very nice game. Very nice sacrifice. Uh, very kind of thematic. But unlike the Gary game where it felt like there was there was a lot of calculation, there, there were a lot of situations where Gary had to kind of trust the intuition. And in this case, it felt like there weren't really many options other than sacking the, sacking the queen on g6. Um, do I have an immortal game? I don't have a game like in the same nature. I, I would say the closest thing I have would be my game against Boris Gelfon from the uh, from the World Team Championship in 20, 2010, I believe it was, if I'm not mistaken. That would be the closest thing I have to a uh, to an immortal game.